Today, I want it to be mostly just like an art day because it's been so long since I gave myself one of those. I do have a couple things to get done first. I wanna um, do the postage for that package I'm sending off to my friend with her Christmas presents. And then I might as well also package any store orders that have come in since yesterday and schedule a pickup for that. But that shouldn't take long. There's probably not that many. And then just do art things. So I've got my new painting sweater on. Uh, I think I'm gonna start though with some doodling so I was watching Franard's latest video and she sketches in ink all the time and I'm like, I wanna do that. I just have the urge. It's probably gonna turn out horribly because I'm definitely a messy sketcher and I just, I don't sketch cleanly. So doing it with a pen will be interesting. And then maybe switch to the painting afterwards, work a little bit on that oil painting that I've been neglecting. So, yeah. Here are the orders. And there's Kiki. Okay, the tripod's back in place, as is the table. I've amassed some items here that I'm gonna draw. Because if I'm doing pen doodling, it's a lot harder to draw something from imagination in pen compared to looking at something. It's a good warm-up exercise, you know? Not really much creativity involved, just trying to warm up the hands by copying something. So, I figured I would start with these, and then I can decide if I want to do more after, or if I want to switch over to painting or something. We got this little doll here. She's like a miniature porcelain doll. And this is one of the ornaments from our tree. Look how cute. We have this pitcher, a little Polly Pocket, and Pua. And I've got my Christmas tree plugged in because I do have the curtains closed right now so I can see the lights. Yeah. Just to help set the mood. I don't know what pens I'm going to be using. I have this box of pens. Yeah, wait. Okay, <laughs> what's that the cap for? Uh-oh. <laughs> hey! Oh, I didn't know those were in there. Woo! Charcoal. That stuff's not supposed to be in here. Yeah, that's a contender. Those are Cricut markers. I got these. You know, I think I, I think I have enough for now, though. All right, are you ready for amazing art session number one? Now, despite me pulling out all those inking pens, I used one and only one pen for the whole thing. I just got into the groove, and that one was doing what I wanted it to do, so I just stuck with it. So. I sat there hovering my hand over the page before doing the first stroke for the chin. I was kind of just doing motions in the air with my hand. Then finally I went for it. I did the line and it was lopsided. <laughs> so I immediately was like, this was a mistake. What am I doing? But I kind of just thickened the line to fix it a little bit because with an exercise like this, the lines aren't going to be perfect. The proportions aren't going to be correct. You just have to kind of roll with it and trust your judgment. I found that I actually studied the object a lot more than I would have if I was using pencil because I feel like maybe I just get impatient with pencil or something or like you know you can erase so you kind of just go for it and you're relying on your imagination too much instead of the reference and so this forced me to study it a little better but there were still moments like I draw the eyelids and I'm like oh they're too far apart well this is just what they are now <laughs> just draw in the eyes. <laughs> So the doll went not too bad, all things considered. And I wasn't going to color in her skirt dress thingy. Uh, I was just going to add a bit of lines for texture. But then I thought it'd be nice to fully, not fully color it in, but add extra lines so that it does look darker than the rest, just for some value contrast. Since none of this is being colored. So just added a whole bunch of lines so that it was clearly darker than the pattern of her sleeves and the like the dress underneath the little pinafore thing and her uh <laughs> the ribbon around her neck 
very thick, very wide. She's got a mega choker, but you know what? All in all, it's pretty good. Even though it doesn't look identical to the doll, I'm pretty darn proud of that for doing that completely in pen. So great success, huh, Kinky? Yeah, now we're on to the little snowman, that little cutie patootie. And again, this one turned out quite well. Although I feel like it started out better than it finished. Like trying to draw the actual shape of the body, I was like, well, here we go. <laughs> but overall, not too bad. Maybe arms a little short. The hat was very forgiving because I was coloring it in black. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I need to make this brim of the hat thicker. Easy, because it's all solid black. So I can just easily make it thicker. Woohoo! <laughs> But man, this ornament is so cute. It's one of Christian's ornaments, and I just can't get over it. It's just way too adorable. And now moving on to Pua. I propped the little figurine up on the edge of my sketchbook so that it was held at the angle I wanted to draw it at. And for this one, I started mapping things out a little bit, like doing little light lines for where the head was going to be but I realized I was making it way too big so I started drawing it smaller so there are those two random lines hovering above the head <laughs> because that's where the head was originally going to be and I couldn't erase that I just had to deal with my mistake but Puma I think turned out pretty good as well maybe ears a little too big but <laughs> you look a little bat like <laughs> but other than that not too shabby and I think it's pretty darn cute. I had to squish them there on the bottom of the page, but it was fine. I didn't want to put them on the other side because I knew I would draw the other things kind of large on the page. And so the little spot on the ear kind of covered up one of the lines. Eh, eh, look at that. So cute. And now on to this metal picture. And again, I did sketchy lines. I just had to. For this one in the Polly Pocket, I had to because they're a lot more complicated than the others and I needed at least the scale roughly planned out. The proportions are not correct in the end because I think I was doing the top half of the picture too big. But yeah, I had to do at least that little rough mapping because it was, it was a lot to just try to go in there, <laughs> do it straight on the paper. And this one had a lot of little ornate details on it. And you know what, looking at these illustrations, you wouldn't know if the proportions are off you know, it's it, like it, they still look good on their own. And that's kind of the point is that it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be done with intent and purpose. And it was overall extremely enjoyable. Like, I think I need to do this more often because it's fun and I don't have to worry about it all smudging. Like, yes, the ink does smudge a little bit onto my finger, but it's different than pencil. It just stays so clean and it makes me sketch a lot faster than I would have otherwise. And be more observant. So really liked that. Trying to do something from the imagination in pen <laughs> probably would be a mess. <laughs> but when I have reference in front of me, it makes it that much easier. So highly, highly enjoyed this exercise. And now we're getting on to the Polly Pocket. Again, I mapped it out just because it's very detailed, but it's also a geometric shape. Okay. I do not do geometric shapes very well. I like things that have very organic kind of flowy lines. So this was difficult. I'm like, how am I even gonna get, get the perspective of this correct? But you know, it was decent. It was decent, especially considering it's done in pen. I'm actually pretty proud with how I mapped out the star. Cause like geometric shape, hard. Geometric star, hello. <laughs> it's not easy, <laughs> but I liked it. And I would say maybe I went a little too hard with the details inside the Polly Pocket. Like maybe I could have simplified it a little bit because the end result is a little busy, but you know what, who cares? There's really no purpose to this. It was just for fun, I guess. And I had a lot of fun drawing the inside of the Polly Pocket, all the little details and stuff. So I suppose it was fine.
So yes, this pen exercise, highly enjoyable. I definitely recommend it. It is a bit stressful in a way, but once you get going, you kind of realize it's less stressful because you just roll with the mistakes and it makes it a little more freeing and fast and fun. And I had a great time with that. Stay tuned for more art later on this video, by the way. I get to some painting later on. Well, that was really fun. Definitely scratched that itch I had to do the ink sketching. If you want to see the back sides of these, nothing. Even when I colored a lot of black, nothing. Shameless self promo. There's cat fur on this. I'll probably actually grab a limb roller and go over it. <laughs> this needs a lot of work still. I almost need to reference my original illustration because there are details on here you can't see because it's gonna go on an upper layer of the painting and I kind of forget what those details are. Although would I even get that far today? I don't know. Because uh, I was working on this outer section last, making my way inward, but this is still too dark. Like this needs to be paler, like very pastel. So I might need to go in and uh, fix that a bit. I mean, this corner looking kind of good, the green. This one, too dark. So same with you, too dark. Her eyes are also not a good color either. There's a lot left to do. And I kind of want this to also be a little bit um, splotchy with like visible paint strokes of different colors. Just kind of like artsy looking, you know. So right now it doesn't have that vibe, but before I set up all my painting stuff, it's time for a little unboxing. I also might take a break to get some food before continuing. This was a little Black Friday treat to myself. <laughs> I opened the wrong side. <laughs> Everything's deep down in there. Oh. I'm going to have to cut open the other side. There's something in there. Probably like a thank you card or something. <sighs> a little mini print. So I ordered from Jessica Rue's shop because I love her artwork. I get her calendar every year, which I did also get. Except it didn't come from her shop. It came from Amazon. So this is a little freebie print. Cute. Some promo for her other products and projects. What I got were some prints because she had 20% off. So. <gasps> oh, I love her art style so much. Look at that. The texture, the muted colors, all of it. Oh, okay, so there's that one. And then, ooh, this one. I'm unsure where all of these are going because I the idea was to fill some space in this room. I'm going to be doing my gallery wall again and I have other walls I can fill. This one might go by our coffee station upstairs. Look at that. Love it. Okay. And then, wait, I got four? Oh, I did, I did. <laughs> There's the bicycle. So cute. Oh, the florals. Love it. And so dainty too. Look at that. And last but not least, the letters. Ooh. Ooh. Love. So some of these I probably could have just cut out of my calendars. Like I think this one was in one of the calendars. The bicycle. I'm unsure about the other ones. It's possible. Um, but I just, I'm not going to cut apart my calendars. I'm just not. So <laughs> I uh, ordered actual prints of them. So I need to get frames for them. Ooh. And while we're here promoting other artists, you should check out Sequim's new coloring book. I featured one of her coloring books in a YouTuber coloring book review video. She has a new one out. There's a physical copy and a digital download. You can get watercolor paper or cardstock. So do check it out. It comes with 20 pages. I'll have a link below where you can even get 10% off if you'd like. Yeah, oh, so cute. This room needs a lot of work still, a lot of setup. So in the new year, maybe I'll 
tackle some more projects in this room, like the gallery wall. I need to hang more lights. I actually bought some lights. Let me show them to you. I got some lights like this. I'm a little bit scared of it because I plugged it in in the kitchen and it's on by default. And so it, just, it made this popping noise and there were sparks and smoke. And so I unplugged it and got Christian to plug it in elsewhere and it was fine. But <laughs> uh, yeah, these are a little smaller than I thought. So I don't know if I'm going to want two in each spot I want them. I'll have to do a little test, but I want to mount some lights to the ceiling above the packing station and above the art desk. And so I thought it would be one light. I might end up doing two in each spot. I only bought four. So if that's the case, I'll have to buy more because... I also want some at the top of these, at least like the top of this shelf and this shelf. I don't know if this one needs it, but possibly. Or maybe just that one and that one. It, see, it depends how bright they are, right? Like I might not need one on the middle shelf, but they can sit on the shelf facing the ceiling. And so the light will bounce off the ceiling and light the room. Like that's how I do with other lights like this. It's going off the ceiling. So the light is diffused down below. I just started with four. You can kind of see like how bright they are, how well they work and see if I want to get either something different for the other areas or just more of these. So even above these spaces, they would be mounted facing the ceiling so that again, it's diffused. And it does come with stuff to mount it. I got um, some more smart plugs because I want to be able to just command all my lights with my voice like I did at the old place. This, okay. <laughs> These are way bigger than I thought they were going to be. They're hooks for ceiling mounting stuff. So you drill a little hole. Well, this has to go down, but these wings fold downward. So you fold them down, stick them in the hole and release. And then it's up in your ceiling like that. And you've got a nice strong hook. And I got some small hooks as well. A set of these for cable management and stuff. Like I thought these would be the ones I would use to mount the lights. Because I'm not going to be able to have every mounting point into a joist. So I was like, maybe I can use these hooks somehow, and like, then the lights are hanging. I don't know. Damn it, I don't know. It also depends where the joists are and how exactly I'm going to end up mounting them, because if I'm having two lights instead of one, that's going to change the orientation. But I thought I would use one of the smaller hooks by the wall, because I would need a cable fed, and then down behind the curtain or something to where the plug is. Same on this side, the cable would need to feed to the wall and then down behind, and so a little hook, like maybe those gold ones would hold the extension cord. First I have to test out the lights, see if it's what I like. I mean, this light should, wait, yeah, it should be. Is it off by default? I don't know. Was it on when I last plugged it? <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna die. See, it might've just been the plug upstairs that was the problem, not the light. <sighs> okay, okay. No sparks, no popping, no smoke. See, the thing is the light doesn't look that white. Like you can see the separate colors within the white light. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. You can change the colors and stuff too. Like there's a remote and there's an app. I'm thinking I might need two over here, yeah. I don't think one is gonna be enough. But I'm not doing that today. I just thought I would show that because that arrived in the mail recently. Leftovers, leftovers. That's way too much to eat right now, but I'll have some of it. It's a big clump. So here's what we got to do. <laughs> Just open these curtains because the sun's over there now. So I can open these ones without being blinded. That winter sun is truly brutal. Just the angle of the sun coming in because this this is south facing. So, oh, it's like right in your face all winter. OK. OK, I'm all set up. New drink acquired. This creamer, a little disappointing. I had used up all my After 8 creamer. After 8s are little thin mints with chocolate around them. And so it's a very minty creamer. And I went to buy more, but I saw that they had peppermint mocha and there's candy canes all over the packaging. And I'm like, okay, this is probably really similar. Let's give this a try. It's not really peppermint mocha. It's just mostly mocha. It's very chocolatey. Even the creamer itself is brown, whereas the After 8 creamer is white. So 
It's just chocolatey. Mm. It has like a hint of mint. But it's barely there. <laughs> Wait, why is there that mini Jaeger down there? I think I thought it was cute, so I wanted to keep it. <laughs> I didn't realize it's just sitting in the paint cart. Wait, I don't want to block my phone. I want to be able to like watch or listen to stuff. When I paint, you can go there. You, okay. There you go. I just don't want to forget about it. That's, ooh, that's precarious. <laughs> I've put down some plastic just to cover this. I need to get some plasticky tablecloths for this because I don't want to use my cloth ones if I'm going to get paint on it accidentally, you know. I can't even remember what I used last time. Maybe I didn't use anything and then I had to clean paint off the table. I don't remember. I might do a new sheet just because this is getting confusing. I'm not going to know what's old paint and what's new. Oh, that just... That was practically already torn off. All right. Yoink. My oil's gone. That never really happened in Vancouver, but it is drier here. Hmm. Need more of this. Houston, we have a trub. As soon as I start filming, I get it. I could not get it. It was just going click, 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 because I couldn't push it down far enough. Okay. okay, fine. Mock me on camera. That's nice. Fascinating. Okay. We're going to need like 10 pounds of white. Maybe tuck my hair behind my ears so I don't touch it. I can get paint all over it. I've been trying to use up this Duo Aqua white. <laughs> Because I do prefer my Gamblin paints, but I do have a lot of these to get through. But I also have this white and this white. <laughs> this this guy? Because this painting, using a lot of white. It's very pastel. I mean, white's going to be your most used color pretty much no matter what. But especially for this painting. And every time I go to unscrew it, it just twists it, as you can see. These lids get kicked shut. And then I have to use my teeth, which is why there are also teeth marks all over this. I'm gonna break a tooth. Woohoo! And there was a little hole in here at one point, which is why there's tape on it. This painting session is not gonna look that exciting because I'm working on the background still, which is like not gonna look that exciting. <laughs> Me just going over areas that have already been painted. Because I doubt I will really get to the girl today. I guess it depends how quickly I do the background, but I know the stuff I've done so far kind of took me a while. Let's make a couple piles of white because it tends to get contaminated with whatever color I'm using. And that's a lot of paint, but I probably will get through all of that. Mm, let's use this corally color because that's what I'm getting up to next. Uh, oh god. <sighs> I probably could also put an apron on. I might spare my pants. Even though this is my painting sweater, I don't really want to get paint on the pants. Although the sweater is more at risk because of the sleeves. Uh, let's put this on. Oops. Oops. See, yeah, I'm already touching it. I'm already touching it. Let's put this here. I'll just start with a bit because I don't really know. I mean, I probably would use way more than that, but I don't know. I don't know. That also does not look quite orangey enough. I might want a little bit of yellow in there. Having the paper towel roll holder on this cart is the best thing ever. <laughs> oh yeah, we're also blending in with the yellow areas. We'll definitely need yellow. I'm not sure which one I was using, but let's go with like this one because it's a little more orangey than say this one. This is a warmer yellow. Oh my god, this is one of the toxic colors. It's actual cadmium yellow. I got this for Secret Santa one year because before I had... Wait, where is it? Oh yeah, this one, cadmium yellow light. So the light just means it's like a non-poisonous version. <laughs> I mean, as long as you don't eat this, you're fine. <laughs> oh, oh, it's peeing. Sometimes it pees oil at the beginning, so. Yeah, we'll start with that. All right, I'm just gonna go back to like YouTube videos, maybe an audiobook or something. So, I'll check in later, yeah, okay. So I ended up getting a lot farther in this painting than I thought I would that day. I thought I would maybe just do the background. No, we got to the girl too. There is still gonna be a lot more left to do. Like there are a lot of details 
in the painting that we don't see yet, like lots of sparkles and stars and things like that. I'm really distracted because the doorbell just rang. I think it's the mailman. Please, Christian, please answer the door. Oh, he's going. He's going. Oh, thank God. Okay. I'm recording a voice over here. Uh, <laughs> it's the final package pickup for my final packages because I just closed my store. I'm recording this voiceover on Monday the 19th. So, yes. But I'm just surprised I worked on the painting for that long in addition to doing those ink illustrations because... I sometimes feel like I can get burnt out of artwork. Like I feel like there's there's two types. Like either I kind of get burnt out after like four or five hours or I can just go like all day. And this is one of those times where I could just go all day. And I think it helped that with the ink stuff, since I was just looking at stuff from reference, it didn't hurt my brain as much as trying to be creative. Like I feel like when you're trying to create something from imagination, it uses a lot more brain power. And copying from reference is a little more relaxing, at least for me personally, that's how I feel about it. And so it didn't kill my creative juices too early in the day. And I was able to put a lot of time into the painting as well. So it was a very successful art day, especially since I haven't been making as much art lately. And so this just felt so good. <laughs> and I actually think I'm going to bring my sketchbook with me over Christmas and like do more ink stuff like that because... I just, I loved that so much. I need more of it. <laughs> so yeah, with the painting though, I kind of saved my butt a little here and managed to save some time by putting down all the white in the background right, up, right off the bat. Like, yes, I would need to add more to blend, but instead of working on one section at a time, doing some white, doing some orange, and then working on the next section, white, then orange, I just did all the white. That way I wasn't contaminating the white on my palette and could just get all of that down at once and then go in with my with my color and add more white as needed like I said to blend but it made the background so much faster it still took a while it's a lot of different little sections and trying to get the color just right took a while and I did lighten up some of the yellow areas and green areas that I'd done previously but then I was like okay well let's move on to the girl I'm having a great time let's keep going and so added more blue to her hair and started adding some highlights and shadows as well as random bits of color. The random bits of color are maybe a little too random. I might modify them further in future layers because there's still, again, more work to be done, even just on the color of her hair, let alone the final sparkle details. So I was thinking maybe the outer edges of her hair could have more colors of the outer edges of the painting, like some of the greens and yellows and the areas closest to her ears for example, would have more purple, kind of like the, the background is reflecting onto her a little bit, maybe. I don't know, just something I'm thinking while I'm looking back at this footage, because right now a lot of the color splotches I added are maybe a little too random. Maybe a little too random. <laughs> and then did I stop after working on her hair? No, I started working on her face as well. I just kept going with it, <laughs> having a great time. So I first added a bit of white to her eyes just to tone them down a bit because they were bothering me. So... <laughs> Got that out of the way and I changed up the color of her lips just a little bit. I'll work on them more in a sec and then added another layer to her skin. So just went down with some white and added very minimal shading. So I don't think I want super intense shading on this one. I want to keep it very, like not very flat, but a little bit flat for the face at least. And so I had to redo the blush, which again looks way better than the first layer. Just doesn't look as transparent I guess it always looks better the more lay layers you have with oil paint here and so did that I kind of lost detail in her nose so I'll have to bring that back at a later date and then the lips I have the edges of the lips blending out into the skin color which I like quite a bit and so yeah there's still a long way to go on this but I made decent progress yay so happy because I haven't touched it in a couple months, so finally moving forward. <laughs> There's only a little bit of footage left here, so I'll just add a bit of music because I don't have anything else to say.
There's a lot left to do, but that's progress. Whoa, whoa. Uh, I am going to wash my brushes, I guess. I don't think I'll have time to work on this tomorrow. So I've got some editing to do, some accounting to do. Look how cute this is, though. Look at the pastel! So yeah, I'm just gonna clean up and then go chill for the rest of the evening. We gotta watch Survivor. I'll just give you some close-ups as I close out the vlog, because I was gonna maybe include more footage from a future day, but I've just edited this and it's already getting quite long, so we'll save that for the next one. And I just thought you want some close-ups because we never got that. Seeing the texture of the paint. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.